The Challenge of the Yukon. I am the king of you hosting. King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> It was early afternoon, and Sergeant Preston was on patrol duty in the Yukon with his lead dog, the Great King. The snow was swept clean from much of the land, and Preston had left his sled and team in town. What is it, King? All right, King, you lead the way. He's going after something, but I can't make out what it is. He's following a scent. It'll be a good idea to see what it leads to. All right, boy, I'm coming. Yes, I see, King. Footprints, huh? Oh, that's strange. Snow's partially covered those tracks. But it's worth investigating. Hmm, the wind swept this land clean. The tracks stop. King, old fellow, you'll have to lead from here on. That cave over there? Is that where you're going, King? Well, King, you've never been wrong before. Whatever's in that cave must be pretty important. Uh, this is one place we've missed on our patrols, King. Hmm. Here's some wood. Someone uses this cave. But what for? Look at these pelts. Fox, lynx, beaver. Why, they're beautiful. Trapper who uses this cave for a storeroom has certainly got a fortune in fur. One man couldn't have. Well, this cave is full of pelts. Yes, King? What's over there now? Oh, I see. So this is what had you so excited, boy. Now, what would any trapper with these rich skins be doing with dog and wolf pelts? They have no value. I can understand a trapper building up a supply of high-grade pelts, but why would he keep so many of these worthless ones? What is it, boy? Hmm? Someone coming? Yes, King. There's something wrong here. We can't get out without being discovered. We'll get back at the far end of the cave. Be safe here. Now play dead, King. Play dead, boy. Well, this is another bunch we'll catch you now. Yeah. <coughs> uh, that's the last of them, thank heaven. I'm so tired of hauling these pelts. The Holland's just... almost over now. We take one more load of dog and wolf skins to the storehouse, and then the whole thing can go up in smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And those trappers, they'll take it mighty hard. <laughs> Good thing you made them sign those contracts. Our agreements will make us rich. We don't pay, though a shipment is made. <laughs> that contract was the smartest thing you ever put together, Van. I'm jack of all trades, and a pays to know a little about them all. I didn't have much to do with any law, but I can draw up a watertight contract. And there's not a thing any of those trappers can do to break their agreements. Yes, look at that beaver skin. It's a beauty. Yeah, it's a beauty, all right. We're sitting mighty pretty. Look at those fox pelts. Uh, these skins will bring a fortune. Yeah? What do you have a gold mine in the fur business? All them trappers need is to hear the prices we pay for the skins, and they're bringing the best ones to us in carloads. The best part of it is we pay when shipment's made, <laughs> and we never ship. Yeah, we can't tote these wolf and dog skins to the warehouse till dark, Vance. No, we might as well stay right here till sundown. Yeah, I'll start a fire. Wait a minute. 
Leave that firewood alone and let me listen. What's eating you, Vance? There's someone in this cave. Oh, who could be? There's in? someone in here, I tell you. Listen, Vance, there ain't a soul knows about this cave. Well, we can look around just to make sure if it'll make you feel any better. It's no joke, Duval. I know there's someone in here. You got a sixth sense, Vance. You go along that wall. I'll take this side. Well, there's so many parts of this cave, we can look all night and still not be anywhere. Shut up. I don't know what's got into you lately, Vance. You was never so edgy before. Come out with your hands up. It'll go a lot easier with you. They ain't gonna walk into our arms, Vance. If there is somebody in here, you know that. Then we'll search this cave till we find him. Come on. I don't know where he gets these ideas. Someone in the cave. He's taking this thing pretty seriously. That's a warning. Come out with your hands up. You shot loose in some rocks. Oh. Hey, what the? I told you there was somebody in here. Now bring that light over. I've got a gun and I'm going to use it. Maybe some of that rock hit him, Vance. Hurry up with that light. Jumping horn toads a mountie. Well, I never expected to meet Sergeant Preston knocked out by a couple of falling rocks. Come on, Duval, we'll tie him up before he regains consciousness. Uh, here's some of that rope we used to tie the pelts together. That'll be all right. <laughs> if that mutt moves, shoot him. Oh. There, that does it. We had a hard time getting free of these ropes. Oh, my head. I must have... Shut up, you mutt. King, old fellow. We've got to do something about this mount events. He heard us talking. Don't worry, we'll take care of him. Shoot that mutt, Duval. Quiet, King. Call him out here. All right, King. Come on out, boy. Shoot him, Duval. Oh, now, Vance. You heard me. Are you going to shoot him, or will I? Make a break for King. Go on, boy. Well, get him. No, you won't, Vance. You're not going to kill King. Go ahead. Shoot, Duval. Uh, no, you, Vance. He's clean away. Uh, if you'd have shot him when I told you. King. Hey, King, is that the dog? Yeah, that... that's the smartest lead dog in the Yukon. And now he's going to bring help, thanks to you. Well, we'd better get rid of this mounty fast, then, Vance. Sure. Fine. Have you got any ideas? Well, put a couple of bullets in him right now. You should have thought of that when the dog was here. No, it's suicide to kill a Marty. You'll never get away with this. Listen, Preston. This is one time you're not holding the gun. You'll die all right, but without bullet marks on you. You can't win, Vance. Sometime and soon, the inspector will send one of the other Mounties to see what's happened. Let him. By that time, Duval and me will be so far out of the Yukon, your law will never catch up with us. Now, don't worry. When you're found, Preston, it's not going to look like murder. What do you aim to do with him, Vance? We'll gag him and take him for a walk. You mean... Yes. We'll have to go ahead with our plans tonight. We can't waste any time. That dog will have someone back here in a few hours. You're right. Let's pack up these furs and get moving. Late that night, with heavy packs on their shoulders, Vance and Duval sneaked into Machiti and forced Preston at the point of a gun to go ahead of them. We'll go right to the warehouse. Yeah. The sooner we get there, the better. I don't like going through the town carrying this stuff. Don't worry, no one will stop us. I'm thinking about that dog. Once Preston's out of the way, our troubles are over. <laughs> of course, it'd be different if that mutt could talk. Here we are. I never was so glad to see any place in all my life. Mounty was downright obedient. <laughs> Throw him down on top of some of those worthless pelts, then tie his feet. All right, Mounty. <clears throat> you won't be able to move when I finish tying this. <clears throat> we'll put a lot of these dog skins around him. <clears throat> you figure he's... We want Sergeant Preston's death in the fire to look real. And we want to be sure there's not a chance for him to get out alive. I get you, Vance. That way you can say he was caught trying to save someone from the burning warehouse, huh? Good idea. Now, someone in this outfit has got to get ideas. Come on, Duval. We'll put some of this oil around. That ought to be.
be enough, Vance. Yeah, that'll do it. Now I'll take this lamp. Yeah, those skins burn plenty fast. This place will be an inferno in five minutes. Less than that. Come on, let's get out of here. I don't want to be too close to this place when the fire is discovered. Attracted first by the red glow of the flames against the darkness of the night, men poured from ramshackle buildings surrounding the warehouse and watched the fire. They knew the furs inside were lost. They knew that the cost of the damage would break many a trapper's heart. But they didn't know that inside the building, Sergeant Preston lay bound and gagged, helpless in the face of certain death. A tall, lanky trapper came from Mashiti City's cafe. The expression on his face told the story more eloquently than words. Hey, all my furs are in there. Yeah, look at them flames. I'm going in there. You're local. If you do, you'll never get out alive. My warehouse. We're ruined. There ain't a chance in the world of saving anything. Laval, if that building caves in, we haven't a chance. Yes, and it's gone. My furs. Man, 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 listen to me. You better make good in them first, yeah. Vance. What are you going to do about it, Vance? Boys, I'm sorry. What about us? Vance, we won't lose everything, will we? What Wait about a minute. Well, listen to me. You men all signed agreements with us. We agreed to pay when we ship the furs. If the furs aren't shipped, we don't pay. You mean I've lost a whole year's trap in that fire and I get nothing to show for it? I'm sorry, Hankins, but there's not a thing we can do about it. We lost the warehouse. There goes the building. <laughs> Does it do well? Preston's covered with red hot embers by now. I gotta hand it to you, Vince. Well, Hankins, what was in that warehouse is just a hopeless loss now. You ought to give us at least a quarter of what our furs were worth, Vance. If we'd have taken them to Hudson Bay Company, we'd well, have Well, gotten... you didn't take them to the Hudson Bay Company. Why do you suppose you pay such high prices? We got competition to meet. We meet it the best way we know how, that's with highest prices. We don't allow a cent for any losses. You don't have to take a loss, Hankins. Preston. No, no, wait, I'm seeing things. Huh. How did that You're muddy? not saying things, Duval, but you soon will be. The inside of a jail. Oh, that mutt, he must Yes, Vance, thanks to King here, I got out of that burning warehouse. He chewed through the ropes. Uh, what did you mean, Sergeant? You said I don't have to take no loss. I meant just what I said, Hankins. Your furs, together with the furs of the other trappers, are all safe in a cave about two miles from here. Uh, well, how be... Vance said Vance to... and Duval are under arrest. You'll have to prove your story first, Monty. I'll prove it. Hankins, I'll take you to that cave where you'll find your furs. Well, it ain't no crime to put furs in the cave. And as for yourself, Monty, you can't Maybe prove... Maybe I can't we... prove you tried to kill me, Duvall. You have no charge, Preston, you know it. You can't prove we burned down our own warehouse. We didn't know the furs had been transferred to the cave. Someone else did it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We didn't know nothing about it. You have agreements with these trappers to pay them high prices when you ship. You agreed to those high prices because you didn't expect to pay them. But we'll make sure you ship now, and the law will see you stand by every word of your agreement. Sergeant, that contract gives him 30 days to ship. Don't worry, Hankins. They'll ship in 30 days, all right. And you'll have your money. <coughs> yes, King, the case is closed. <coughs> Upholding the motto of the Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Preston and the great dog King maintain the right and get their man. Don't miss their next thrilling adventure when they meet the challenge of the Yukon once again on Saturday at 6.30. <coughs> Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>